Hello everyone! Good morning! Me climbing over the piano. Um, <laughs> Graceful moves. <laughs> <laughs> some reason all the, all the furniture seems a lot, bit, bit closer today, I don't know why. So, um, it's because of the light, we're moving <laughs> slowly closer. We're still a little bit yeah. in the shadows today, but um, not quite so bad as last week I don't think, but we'll work that out for future weeks. Yeah. But uh, welcome to uh, another online series, lovely to, to gather together in our own homes, in our um, uh, own places, uh, but still to be able to come together. Uh, and worship God uh, this morning um, and it's really exciting today we're starting a, a new series um, looking at the book of James I've got actually here we go little picture there we go there's our little uh, our little uh, picture for this uh, this series faith and following uh, we've called this series as we look through the book of James and just look there at this letter um, <laughs> at, at some of the wisdom and and the things it has to teach us about what following uh, Jesus looks like one of the really interesting things of um, you know Jesus, when you look at Jesus in the Gospels uh, two of the sort of uh, things he says most often to people as he invites them uh, in, into uh, into what he has for them one is he says repent and believe um, that's one of the things he often says to people and then the other one is come and follow me uh, these two different ways that Jesus invites people uh, to him um, and in a sense I think James as much as anywhere else uh, looks at how we bring these two things together of, of faith on the one hand and believing in Jesus and then following Jesus and so over the coming weeks we're going to see uh, you know look at James's teaching and what James has to teach us uh, about bringing these two elements of our Christian lives uh, together and we've got Joan uh, Wood this morning kicking us off with the first part of James's letter just giving us a bit of background and um, input from from those first uh, verses and then Eve's going to be uh, bringing our prayers for us later as well. So uh, really looking forward to that. But as, uh, uh, as usual, we're going to start with a couple of songs. And we've got you know, a new series, so we thought new song as well. So we're going we're gonna to stick a new song uh, right at the beginning uh, of our time together. Well, actually, we're going to do Praise God From Whom Our Blessings Throw, the <laughs> doxology, which is as old as old can be <laughs> at first. And then we're going to go into a new song <laughs> called Sing His Praise Again, which we did do on our midweek melody a few weeks back. So you may have heard it. Uh, on there but um, at, when we get to that one uh, just join in when you can uh, listen if you need to for a little bit to get the tune but it's a great song which just reminds us uh, yeah to look to Jesus and to sing his praise again so why don't we just open uh, with prayer and then we'll sing these two songs uh, together Lord God we thank you so much for this new day we thank you that this is a day that you've made that your mercies are new every morning that you are a faithful God who we can look to and come to uh, each day and uh, invite your presence into our lives. And Lord, we do that today. We invite you here amongst us. We ask for your presence to uh, be with us as we gather together to worship you now. Uh, we offer this time to you and offer our praise to you again this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
us, Lord, I just pray that you'll give us a new song today, Lord. That we will sing you from our, the bottom of our hearts, whatever circumstance we're in, Lord. And as we open the book of James and um, start a new, a new sermon series, Lord, I just pray, Father, you'll open our hearts and our eyes to hear your voice afresh today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us, that you're with us here today. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will just touch all our hearts and tune us in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, Lord, we were, as that song say, we, we remember today how you have never failed us. That you are the God who has been faithful uh, throughout our lives. We remember that through the name of Jesus, you have made a way for us. And we rejoice in that today. We give you thanks that you are the God who's made a way for us. And we remember your goodness and your grace. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Hope you enjoyed that new song. We'll see it again in a couple of weeks, probably, just to, to bed it in a little bit. But um, yeah, I love that the way that it just sort of calls us to praise again and reminds us of, of God's goodness. So uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed singing it to uh, where you are. Great. So we're going to uh, have our reading uh, today. We're going to be reading just the first uh, 18 verse or so of the book of James, the letter of James. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, Joan is going to just uh, unpack a little bit. Uh, of that uh, first few verses for us. So, J um, sorry, Trina's going to read James. From James. Not, not James is going to read Tr Trina. <laughs> yeah, of, the letter wrong, of Trina. <laughs> Heresy or something. <laughs> Here we go. Here's uh, our first reading. So, this is James 1, um, verse 1 to 18. James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes scattered amongst the nations. Greetings. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testings of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding faults, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts, doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Believers, humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position, but the rich should take pride in their humiliation, since they will pass away like a wild flower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant, its blossoms falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits for all he created. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Brilliant. Thanks, Trina. So, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, Joan is uh, going to bring our reflection to us this morning and just unpack some of uh, yeah, the great verses that we've just uh, read. So here we go. Good morning. Today we begin a series of talks that focus on the Epistle of James with a theme of faith and following. It is believed by many that James is the brother of Jesus rather than James the Apostle 
and although others disagree, they say that he was James the Apostle. Personally, I like the idea of James being the brother of Jesus, who, having followed his ministry, I assume very closely, was now carrying on his brother's teachings, keeping it in the family, you might say. Now, James was possibly writing in AD 49 prior to the Jerusalem Council held in AD 50 to first century Jewish Christians who had been scattered throughout the Mediterranean. In their hostile surroundings, they were tempted to let intellectual agreement pass for faith. So James wrote to them to expose hypocritical practices and to teach right Christian behaviour. The letter expresses James's concern concern for persecuted Christians who were once part of the Jerusalem church. So he wrote to them as a concerned leader to encourage them in their faith during those difficult times. And I think what we have in James is an elaboration of some of the things that Jesus taught in a way that helps us understand how God wants us to live in the here and now. And the main themes of his letter are living faith, trials, laws of love, wise speech and wealth. And today's reading speaks of trials and temptations. James speaks of trials, but he does not say if you have trials and face trials, but whenever you have them and face them. He assures that we, he assumes that we will face trials. He encourages patience and steadfastness, perseverance through difficult times, remembering to thank God for promising to be with us, asking him to give us strength to endure and to be patient. We must believe that God will not leave us alone with our problems. And when James speaks of wisdom, he is talking not only about knowledge, but about the ability to make wise decisions in difficult circumstances. Whenever we need wisdom, we can pray to God. To believe and not doubt means not only believing in the existence of God, but also believing in his loving care. And James describes those who doubt are like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. I'm sure we have all seen the constant rolling of huge waves at sea, and we know how restless they are, subject to the wind, to the gravity and tide. This doubt leaves us as unsettled as the restless waves. In these times, we need to ask God for wisdom and rely on him to show us what is best for us. He goes on to talk about those who are poor and those who possess riches and wealth. If wealth, power and status mean nothing to God, why do we attribute so much importance to them and so much honour to those who possess them? Is it not what we have in our hearts, not our bank accounts, that matters to God and endures for eternity. And then temptation. Like a snowball rolling downhill, sin grows more destructive the more we let it have its way. And the best time to stop a temptation is before it is too strong or moving too fast to control. I believe God does test us, but I do not believe he tempts us. We can resist the temptation to sin by turning to God for strength and choosing to obey his word. This is sometimes quite easy to make excuses and blame others and think others are responsible for our own actions. And we would use words, for example, like, I couldn't help it. Well, everyone's doing it. It was just a mistake. Nobody's perfect. I was pressured into it. And I didn't know it was wrong. But James teaches that instead of making excuses and trying to shift the blame, we should accept responsibility for our actions, confess them and ask God for forgiveness. Wow, there is plenty to challenge us in the words James wrote. And this is just the beginning. But I believe he elaborates on the words and teachings of Jesus and applies those to us where we are today in some very practical ways for what it looks like to live out the Christian life in the world today. Sometimes hard to swallow, but the only way is to trust and obey. And as the words of that most wonderful hymn say, 
trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Amen. Amen. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Joan. I love that uh, reminder of that song at the end, Trust and Obey, uh, because there's no other way. And in a sense, I, as I was reflecting on that, that links quite nicely with that faith and following, doesn't it? Another way we could perhaps say, um, you know, uh, explore that theme of faith and following is to trust and obey as well. It sort of links in uh, nicely. And as as John says, I think, you know, there's so much packed in uh, to this uh, short letter uh, of James. And over the, the coming weeks, you know, as, as James sort of speaks to us as believers about how we um, yeah, consistently live out the faith that we proclaim, there's going to be so much sort of wisdom and uh, and things for us to unpack together. And you know, one of the things I think we'll see in the coming weeks is that a lot of what James has to say is about how we relate with one another, how we uh, treat one another and live together uh, as a community uh, under Jesus. Um, but today, in this sort of this first chapter, the focus is really more on ourselves and on us uh, first and foremost, uh, behaving rightly ourselves and living. Uh, in light of God's forgiveness and, and love uh, ourselves. You know, as, as Joan said, you know, it's us encouraging us to be patient in trials when they come or asking God for wisdom when we need it or taking care of what's in our heart more than what's in our bank accounts or confessing the wrong that we do uh, rather than pushing the blame uh, onto someone else and asking for God's forgiveness. So I thought today um, as we as we just settle into this new book and as we just reflect first and foremost on our own response uh, to uh, a faith, our own response of Jesus' call to repent and believe but also to follow him. Um, that'd be good just to um, ask uh, for God's forgiveness uh, and ask for God's spirit as well to, to fill us afresh at the start of this new journey. So we're gonna uh, say some words of confession uh, now which will come up on the screen which if you wanna join in with, uh, please do. And then we're going to sing just a couple of songs which ask for God's Spirit to, to fill us afresh um, and, and, and commit ourselves again to, to following Jesus. Uh, that song we sang at the beginning, I Will Follow. Um, so if you'd like to join in uh, with these words as they come up, uh, then please do. So we say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be. That we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. So Lord God, we thank you that every good and perfect gift is from above. It comes down from you, the Father of lights. And we thank you again for the gift of your Son. We thank you that those who believe in him, that confess his name, receive forgiveness and new life as a gift from you. And Lord, help us to live in light of your grace and live lives that bring you praise. Lord, as we journey through this book, teach us, we pray, to walk more closely with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to sing, first of all, this song, Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh uh, on me, break me, mold, uh, melt me, mold me, fill me, just to offer ourselves to God again and ask for him to come and fill us and lead us uh, in the coming days and weeks. I've got to try and squeeze. <laughs> Thank you. 
Lord God, we welcome your spirit into our hearts and into our lives again. Lord God, we thank you that you don't leave us alone. That when, you're, uh, when Jesus ascended, you sent your spirit to fill us, to empower us, to help us to walk closely with you. So Lord, fill us afresh, we pray. We know that apart from you, we can do nothing. Lord, we know that we need your spirit to lead us and to guide us. So yeah, at the start of this new uh, series, as we look at this book together, we pray for your filling, your spirit to fill us afresh. Lead us into new truth, new realizations of your love and your greatness. us to live lives that bring you praise. Oh, mm -hmm.
Yes, so Lord God, we commit ourselves to you again. We thank you for that amazing invitation of Jesus to come and follow, to join him on uh, life's adventure, to invite him to uh, fill us with his spirit and to fill us uh, with his forgiveness and new life and walk with him. So Lord, we choose to follow you again today to put you first in our lives. Lord, lead us on, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, we're going to uh, continue in prayer and Eve uh, is going to bring us our prayers uh, for today. So here we go. The response in our prayers today is when I say, Lord, we come with thanks. Please, will you respond to praise your name? Lord, we come with thanks to praise your name. Creator God, who has given so much bounty and beauty. Lord Jesus, teacher and healer, friend and brother. Holy Spirit, who inspires, leads and strengthens us, we come to you now with our prayers for ourselves, our world, our church and each other. We praise your name and thank you for hearing our prayers. God of grace and mercy, our reading from James tells us to be patient in times of trouble. And during this ongoing time of pandemic, we need more than ever to exercise patience and trust. Trust in you, our living Lord. Be with all who are becoming increasingly concerned about the effects of the virus as the number of infections in our region rises. Help us to keep ourselves and our community safe, but remind us that you are with us every step of the way. Guide us in our actions as we live from day to day with this ever-present threat to lives and to livelihoods. Be with those whose health, emotional as well as physical, has been affected during this time and give us patience and wisdom as we continue to move through these uncharted waters. Lord, we come with thanks to praise your name. Lord Jesus, your teaching, as we heard in the passage from Luke, teaches us that even in adversity, there are blessings which abound if we keep our eyes fixed on you. Help us to find those blessings in the ordinary days, in the mundane and in times of tribulation. Teach us the valuable lesson that in looking outwards rather than inwards, we can see the fruits of your sacrificial love. We can feel your blessings in each act of kindness we perform, large or small. Help us too to acknowledge your love in the things that make us rejoice the relationships that enhance our lives, the joy of loving and being loved. Lord, we come with thanks to praise your name. Holy Spirit, we pray for your guidance and inspiration as we look to the future of our church here in Farnsfield. Bless us as we plan to bring your word to those in our community who have not experienced the joy of your love and the sense of belonging as a local church and fellowship can bring. Guide us in our decision making and help us never to lose sight of what you would have us do in your name. And we pray too, Lord, for your richest blessings on the churches in our cluster at Maplebeck and Winkburn and Kirtlington with Hockerton. Lord, we come with thanks to praise your name. We pray for all who are unwell, sad or anxious, for those undergoing treatment and those who are frail. We pray too for all who are caring for others, either professionally or as a carer for a family member. In a moment of silence, we bring before God those we know who need comfort and healing, peace and hope. And we pray for Liz and her husband Eric at this time, asking for your peace and comfort to be with them both. Lord, we come with thanks 
to praise your name. As the seasons change, we praise you for the wonderful warm colours of autumn as the temperature drops. You, Creator God, have painted the world in vibrant colours to lift our spirits. Each new dawn brings the promise of a day full of possibilities and hope. Each stunning sunset brings a sense of peace as the day draws to a close. As we marvel in the natural world around us, help us to preserve this amazing planet, given by you to us to be cared for. May we never take for granted the gift of a world that can meet the needs of all, and may we pass it unpolluted to generations yet to be. Lord, we come with thanks to praise your name. We praise you and thank you for all your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hello. Amen. Amen. Thank you for those. I think we've just about managed to keep the connection going. Um, hello. Yes, yes, I think we're all right. Okay, great. <laughs> we're good. Great. Well, um, if we do suddenly disappear, then we'll we'll get back online uh, as quick as we can. But we'll keep yeah. going for now while we're while we're still good. Thank you so much, Eve, for, for those prayers, and I hope it wasn't too um, jittery. Uh, your end. It came the boy, the the sound came through fine where we yeah. were, but it was just the picture was a bit flickery. Uh, but why don't we end that time together uh, just with the Lord's prayer uh, as well? So our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Great. Well, just uh, as usual, just a few updates. My what's new? It's his birthday. Hey, hey. that's what's new. Hey, that's Happy cheeky. Happy birthday to you. Happy no. birthday to you. No. Happy birthday, dear Chris. Happy <laughs> birthday to you. Did not expect that. That was a surprise. He told me not to do it. There we go. I Thank did. you. That's I'm, very I'm kind. I'm very pleased with that timing. Cause that I'm was very good. That okay. blower. That didn't make there. me jump a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, it's, yeah, thank you, thank you. Well, that, that, that wasn't the news I was going to share, but uh, yeah. Um, so just a couple of other bits. Uh, we've got one thing just to say is, I guess if you haven't read through James, uh, the letter of James, you might maybe maybe try giving that a go this week. It's fairly short, five chapters or so. Um, and yeah, just as we start on this journey, why not uh, just go back to that letter, all of us, and, and we'll just uh, read it through in one sitting. And then over the coming weeks, we'll just unpack that together. Um, we're hoping that by next week we may have the children's group uh, ready again in church at the 9.30 service. Um, we're working through all the safety measures and obviously the uh, announcements coming out tomorrow uh, and in this week hopefully won't affect it but if it does then we'll have to rethink. But um, we're hopeful that next Sunday we'll have a, a children's group within the 9.30 service. Um, and so I will put some more news out via email on Facebook. Uh, later in the week uh, to confirm that and to give you the info on, on what you need uh, to bring if you're hoping to bring children along. Uh, but yeah, we're really hoping to, to get something again for our children uh, back in church and we're working towards that. And the final thing just to say, um, we're collecting for Food Bank obviously for Harvest last week, but do continue to, to bring uh, food donations to the church porch or, or drop them in co-op as well. Um, as I said last week, there's still lots of need around and, and um, and the, the work in Ollerton at Life Spring is, it goes on um, and they were really blessed and, and, mm -hmm. and pleased with, the, with uh, what was given last week and, and it's, yeah, we're really uh, thrilled with the response from Farnsfield uh, for that so uh, thank you for all that you've given uh, and, and let's continue to, to support that going forward as well. Great, that's all what's new. You haven't got any more surprises <laughs> no. for me, have, mate, have you? No. no, the kids have some more. <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> well, I look forward to that. Great, so uh, we're going to final uh, have our final song. Uh, and I was thinking, what do we... we I'm in an hour and what we do, but actually I was thinking in response to what Joan shared, that trust and obey at the end. Um, and, you know, whenever we uh, experience trials, uh, as that passage said, 
uh, to trust God and to, to look to him. I thought maybe we'll, we'll finish with that great uh, song, The Lord's My Shepherd, uh, I'll Not Want, which just reminds us that whatever we go through, God's with us and we, we commit ourselves to trust in him in that chorus. So why don't we use this uh, song uh, uh, to finish our time together. <laughs> our eyes on you, on the constant faithful you, who's always with us. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Great. So as we go out, just a final uh, prayer of blessing as we go uh, out into the week this week. So God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all those whom you love, today and always. Amen. Amen. May we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. 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 Well, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Thanks again to Joan and to Eve uh, for their contributions. I hope you have a great day. And we'll see you next week for part two of Faith and Following. <laughs> God bless. Bye.